Hey, I'm Nick. I'm Amelia. We are Sylvan Esso. And we just did an interview on the Zach Sang Show. It's true. It was wild. You're just going to have to follow the thread. Yeah, check it out. Hello, beautiful human. Uh, my name is Zach. That is Dan. And we welcome to the studio Sylvan Esso. Woo! Woo! Thanks. <laughs> wow. Was that planned? Yeah. <laughs> you guys rehearse that? We rehearse yeah. it in the, in the hotel before we get, do yeah. every one of these. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, there are groups that do that. K-pop groups in particular rehearse their intro, yeah. I mean, over and over and over the and discipline. over and over again. Inspiring. Discipline is the word. Is it inspiring? Uh, <laughs> it is exciting to see. One, big fan. I love folk music, and I love folk and electronic music and that is what you guys do i mean right off the bat i want to know like why do you think those two genres work so well together why do they complement each other you know i'm not sure the the wildest part is that uh when nick nick and i got together to make songs we were just like what does it look like when we do when we make songs together and Mm. it happens to look like folk and electronic music but I, I don't know. We I, set out to make a pop band, which is the yeah, weirdest part. Exactly. But yeah, when you're reaching for genre, usually that's where all the fun begins. When you say reaching for genre, that's when the fun begins. So is it setting a goal, like not a goal, but at least some sort of sonic expectation so you have somewhere to aim? Because some people I also think, start with nothing. I mean, we we kind of do half and half. Because like when we first started, we, we I had made a remix for her, which is kind of, we based the initial sound of the band around this like, remix thing that we had done um but it kind of quickly became a like pop experiment and i feel like it was that it it became that because that was kind of the natural thing we were doing together that was kind of our natural combination but i do think that when Mm. you set out to when you have at least some idea of what you want to do it's really helpful because it then you're not starting with the possibility of like everything Mm. like from everything, how do we narrow it down to a three and a half minute song? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I think it's helpful to start with like a frame, like like uh, you know, like form poetry or something. I think that there's like a there's a beauty in like working within a constraint because I think it shows you the person within that frame. Do you Indeed, know what I mean? which of course is also the essence of pop music that it's Absolutely. like working to reach into a form. And, and by the way, I think that form is up for interpretation, right? And mm-hmm. I think that form comes in many different forms, right? And I always say that. And I, it's so interesting that you 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 bring that up because I like try to hit home and I don't think I always make sense. Also one of my fears is of communicating poorly with people around me. Um, but I, I do believe that like pop music has the ability to literally sound like absolutely anything and everything. It's not a sonic sound. It may be some formulation or a structure to the way a song is presented, but like sonically there's no... Everything needs to sound different from another because pop is collectively popular songs. I mean, and that's, I feel like where it ties back into folk music. Like, that's what folk music is. Folk music is like music for everybody. Like, coming together to sing a thing, which is, to me, the ultimate goal of pop. It's mm-hmm. literally just short for popular. You know, yeah. like, what is, what is everybody agreeing on at any given moment in human musical history. You know what I mean? Totally. And the dream is, how do you create a song that when you're done singing it, someone can sing it back to you? Do you feel like you've done that so far? Yes. I so. feel like, yeah. I mean, that was, that was kind of one of the things, like one of our first songs was this, was this song, Hey Mommy, and part of the, the like wink of that song to me was that it's the same song twice. <laughs> and the second time you hear it, it's the party version. And so like, we teach you the song, And then it gets exciting and then you know it already and you can sing along. You know what I mean? And like that kind of thing, I think, is really exciting to me as a listener. You know, Mm -hmm. like it's we we talk all the time about like, how do we like we make really weird music, but we try to make as many doorways into that music for somebody to access it as possible. So like we try to make stuff that's very specific, but not alienating, you know, like something that doesn't there's no bar for entry for you to like it. Yeah, a little alienating. (laughs) but like that's what I like I like that like somebody who knew nothing about us and nothing about any of our reference points or any of that could maybe hear something and just be like oh like I really love this and it makes me think of my grandpa or whatever but like if you do know everything your grandpa well I'm not (laughs) no but some of those records give like (laughs) no record of yours sounds alike and they all give different very specific yet general energy and the other thing that you like hit on was folk music just brings people together right 
but so does electronic dance music. Like when sure, you yeah. when, when you think of a festival, like what is that but a gathering of like minded people coming together to just get lost in music? So I mean, tying the two the together, club, like the history of dance music, electronic dance music in the United States, like is is exclusively about that. It's yeah. about like creating a space where like usually like marginalized populations can come together and feel safe and make a thing happen. You know, like like feel free together. You know, like isn't I mean that's just what I would hope every concert we ever give could be is like a place for people to go and like feel seen, you know. Yeah. Is electronic dance music the new folk music? Um I don't know. Or is it just now folk electronic music? <laughs> well, I think they all have similar goals. You it's know? all storytelling too, right? Like Isn't that folk music? Feel free and like emotionally connected and like and and heard and like somebody else out there gets the thing that they've been thinking about. I mean, like that's all part of the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Can you balance out the the detailed storytelling that comes along with folk music, but also simplify it in a way that like works in electronic dance music? I don't know. The definition of folk music is so uh, sh shaky to me in that, like, there are all sorts of genres of folk music that we've decided is folk music. And mm -hmm. in reality, like, the thing that we call folk music was usually, like, English songs that made their way to Appalachia and then were regurgitated and, like, spread across the mountains or, like, songs that came from slaves that then white people took and were like, this is ours now. Um, what else is there? Classic. <laughs> I had this great idea. <laughs> um, I'm Elvis. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I don't. Yeah, I don't know how to say. Like, it, all songs are storytelling, right? Like, they're at pretty much every single one. Like, even now, like the like the basic thing of like you and like I'm getting ready to go out to the club and it's going to be great. Th you know, like that's a that's story. A story. Yeah. Yeah, or like, well, I love you and you don't love me as much and I'm mad about that, but I'm persevering, you know? Well, I also feel like, one thing I, I really feel like about your lyrics is that the more specific you get, it seems like the more, somehow, conversely, the more opportunities there are for other people to, to like, make it their own story. That always happens. Yeah. That's the dream, I think. You, but, want, you want to write something that's specific enough so that everyone's like, ah, oh, that's about me. It, it's like specific in general, but also people like detail. Like they attach themselves to detail mm -hmm. and they all have that they all have their version of that one detail but you got to share that detail to get there mm -hmm. it helps i mean that's the foundation to a great relationship and like i think music at the end of the day that is that is what it is now a relationship i mean between you and somebody else like people like give you i mean there is something there in terms of like i do think some of the greatest artists of our time are people that you feel attached to you want to be invested in mm. you also feel lost in their words and you feel more understood about yourself no mm -hmm. yeah absolutely i mean it's like any any art i feel that way about writers all the time too where it's just like like hearing somebody articulate a thing that you had been thinking but failing to articulate yeah you know is so or feeling and harboring, you know, yeah, like that totally. it's, it's so you never knew how to put a point on it. And then somebody comes along and does it and you feel like, oh, I thought that was just me spinning in my own head. And like this person has this, too. It's just a great way to not feel alone. I mean, it's a lonely <laughs> scene out there. You know? It is. But it, why do you think a song like Coffee blows up and becomes so big? I have no fucking idea. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> People really like it. Uh, I think they like it because... Uh, it, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's, people use it as their wedding song a lot, which is strange to me because I think it's a very sad song about like maybe not sad, but m almost all the songs that I write are, are kind of melancholic in nature. I guess it's about being like in relationship with yourself and like constantly coming back to who you are when you're like coming in and out of relationship. The fact that people are like, we're going to use this as our <laughs> wedding song. Where yeah. I'm like, okay, dog. <laughs> Whatever works for you. Yeah, I that's also fine. think <laughs> that's hard. There's a thing that happens in that song that like, to me, you know, that whole song feels like it's, it's, it's about that first time you figure out that like the feelings of love and infatuation are reproducible mm -hmm. and that it maybe wasn't this like one time only special thing. Yeah. You know, and how kind of sad that is. But we we flip it at the end and have the resolve 
of the same line changed to a major resolve, which I don't know if anybody clocks this, but like in my mind when we were writing that, we did it that way because that's how a lot of like life chapter changes or lessons have felt to me, mm. you know, where like something you, you realize something and at first it's like deeply depressing. And, and then after you move through that, you realize that it's actually not depressing. It's this beautiful like thing about the eternal cycle that you're a part of, you know, like there's this kind of moving through an initial woe is me feeling that feels so cathartic mm -hmm. to me. Um, and that's, part of what to me I think I was trying to accomplish by like that major flip at the end there and I think if that wasn't I don't know it's like I think that's one of those things that even maybe people don't realize that they're tying into yeah I don't know 100% I hope happy and sad <laughs> at the same time yeah yeah it gives maybe you all also the is that pop music I think pop music is a way of like happily talking about sad things that is true okay. I would I would definitely yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's enough to be a, a a, a defined bucket under the uh, umbrella that is pop music. Yeah, I think my favorite, my fav, like the only thing I can take away from High Fidelity now is that like opening <laughs> sequence where he's like talking about how pop music is the saddest thing in the world. Like it's about talking about well, sad things happily. Well, it is true, and when you tear it apart and like strip away the production, it does get pretty. It's pretty sad. Oh yeah. But it's, uh, it's sad out there. Oh, you know, we it love it. Be. We love the sad. Yeah, it's great. What is your process like? Do you start by crafting lyrics and then you go to production? Or are you writing to something that's already made or produced? For this most recent record that we're putting out on um, August 12th, it's called No Rule Sandy. Uh, when we were making it, we like Sandy would start jamming and I would just write Stream of Con Consciousness. I've usually do like lyrics and melody at the same time so I can fit the syllables into oh, cool. Scansion in a way that um, that's usually how I derive hook is through like the way syllables live in a line. That's interesting. How'd you figure that out? Just did it. D have you always done it that way? Yeah, pretty much. I also, I don't, when I'm writing, I don't go to instrument. Like at first it was just out of, out of habit. I would just write in the air. And now I find like, I can play the guitar and I can like plunk things out on the piano, but it usually leads to pretty simple uh, m melodic lines. And so, I like the option of just being able to go in the air. It leads to more surprises. What are you finding when he's jamming at the same time? It's not distracting, but like who who leads? That's the fun part. It's both. But yeah, somebody has to start. It's a real. Well, for this one, like a lot of times. Well, let's see. Okay, so on we have a song called Sunburn that. I, for that one, I had written the hook and I came thing, in, yeah. yeah, I'd written the whole thing and I came, usually I write the first verse in the hook and then it's like the dream. Like I write the first verse in the hook and then we see if Nick can like write the rest of the music and then I write a second verse and a bridge. And a, but for that one, I like came in and sang what the beat should be and you can actually hear me singing it in the, like in the turnaround yeah, of the chorus. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, because we recorded that, and then Nick built the beat over that, and then we made it. But but that's for like, getting rarer and rarer. I feel like yeah, or particularly on this record, then like for Echo Party, Nick had all of these songs were written in like twenty minutes, pretty much. Oh. Or like the first, the, the first the like groove, the initial idea like was built. Like Nick would make something, and I would immediately respond, and but then we, we would build around it. The craziest part was we wouldn't like we wouldn't get there immediately. Like it's like we. And this is usually how we do things. We'd get together and be like, hey, what's what what do we wanna what seems like it might be a jumping off place? And, you know, on this record it was like, all right, let's just record, just improvise a couple of vocal stacks, and then I'll take that and I'm gonna sample that and kind of try to make that into maybe the, the and, chords. And, and then, then when I'll... he gets something good, I just say like, Yes, go with that. So mm -hmm. I kind of play conductor sometimes. Yeah, we kinda we kinda push on each other. Yeah, you know, like like she'll be doing something, and I'll be like that more like that, but more like this, and it should end up, and then we'll keep, you know, like exactly, or like, yeah, he'll be like manipulating a stack, and I'll be like, go back three paces. Usually, we're we're recording while Nick is jamming, so I'll be like, go back eight bars, take this loop, 
put it in a different thing, loop that. Or, like, she won't be reacting to, like, my favorite part, so then I'll be like, okay, I have to make something that's super fun over that so that she, re it like, reignites her to want to write over this thing. Like, it's all about, it's, like, all kind of trying to, like, Impress. ignite the other person. Yeah, yeah, very personal chemistry. Yeah, and because of that, it leads to some really strange, like, usually Nick and I hear the one in a different place, which leads to like some truly weird musical moments. We have a song on our new record called Your Reality where we just kept both ones for each other. Like we wrote all of the musical parts to confirm both of our time signatures. Yeah, like normally we'd argue about that and then decide on one and then like arrange around that. And this time we were like, oh, it's, well it's called Your Reality and like the whole thing is kind of about your your reality. And so we're like, <laughs> let's just leave it. Let's Let's like validate each viewpoint so that anybody who hears it can hear it either way. Yeah, or it's like and why the time signature in Hey Mommy is so weird. Also, cuz I oh, wrote yeah, it like the six I wrote it thing. for a different. You guys time hear signature. different ones? I didn't even know that was a thing. I thought I, I thought it was just I thought it was one was a one. No. <laughs> I had I don't, no idea. Oh yeah, I don't think I think the one is wherever you want it to be. Yeah, we we argue oh, wow. at this concert. Yeah, my <laughs> dyslexia, like my like neurodivergency is like do whatever you want. Like, yeah. <laughs> Very upset about the idea of rules within music. Yeah. Yeah, they're all trash. I don't believe them. <laughs> so, where did no rules, Sandy, come from? It's a line, quite regularly. In that song. Yeah, quite regularly. When I'm, uh, like recording lyrics for the first time, I'll write them and then record them. So it's the first time that Nick is hearing them as well. I, I'm sorry. I call Nick both Nick and Sandy, and I trade off. Yeah, I was a bit confused. There I'm for a sorry. Second. Just so <laughs> y'all and your listeners and people on the internet know, Sandy and Nick is the same person. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> when I was singing the backups for your reality, there's a backup part that's uh, like, No rules for me, no rules lately, no rules, Sandy. And I did it in a weird time signature, and we looped it under it and so when I when I sang it it was the first time that Nick had heard me saying No Rule Sandy so it was uh, me just talking to him and our dear friend Jen was like that's the name of the record when we played it for her wow. yeah and it just it felt like it was kind of a, like a symptom or like a hallmark of all this other stuff that was already going on you know like we had we had made these three records and felt like we had kind of like perfected the thing we started setting out to do mm. Which and was then, what? I mean, this idea of like like this sound that started with that first record it was like trying to find a way to make this a pop band that still felt like us, and it that la like free love to me just feels like this like airtight. Pe like I love that record. Yeah, free love is our th third record that yeah. we released during the pandemic. Don't release a record during the pandemic. <laughs> well, you <laughs> the you, next one. You said that that was the best music you've ever made, right? Is that the album? Up to, up That's to, what I thought. But now, that point. now I, I like this new record better. This just feels so much f like it feels so much loose. It feels so much less composed, maybe. And I'm, we're just not tr like we made. We created this art project that was like, let's try to make a pop band. And the craziest thing happened where like it worked and people were like, you're a pop band now. And we were like, ha ha ha. <laughs> like w we're like little weird DIY babies that Playing like Coachella, don't. Yeah. yeah, like the like, you know, we started like, I, you know, I managed my first band. I booked my first tours on MySpace, like an indie rock dinosaur at this point. Are Same you, with Sandy, Sandy used to use a binder. Are you talking about Mountain Man? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sick. And, and, but because of that, when Sylvan hit in this way that was like true and authentic all of a sudden like we were like cool kids on the pop scene and I think I accidentally uh, forgot for for a moment I forgot that it was an art project and I started like really leaning towards the major label sound or wanting wanting more and wanting the thing that I saw as success Classic. Classic. Oops. I mean, it led to Grammy nominations, so something worked. Oh, oh we yeah. Had a blast. Like, we I'm were totally yeah, proud of it we, all. Yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful for what we've done. And also, uh, I love my soul and I want to keep it. Yeah, it just kind of felt like a recentering almost. You know, like, like when we were making this, we didn't think that we were making a record. We were just like having fun together and 
trying to make something every day. You know what I mean? It, it literally, we were making it for each other. Yeah, it's like we're back to experimentation. So does it redefine what success is? I mean, in yeah. In, what was that thing? Was it was it Charles Spearin you were talking to that he was like, you were talking about something working out, and he was like, oh, that's got to be hard because now you can see how far it can go. It was Dev, Dev oh, Gupta. Dev. It's our friend Dev, who's in the band Mr. Twin Sister. We're amazing. And we were talking about like the weird levels of this industry that you can get to, where like when you, when you bump up and start playing bigger venues, or when you like get like a new record deal, or you get in like the company of others, all of a sudden you can start see on the radio, whatever. Yeah. yeah, when the ceiling pings up higher, all of a sudden you're always back at the bottom. Like you're always like looking up, being like, oh man, like. Well, the next thing we do is an arena tour or like, you, you know, you can like see Suddenly you s- what you, you don't have as totally. opposed to like being like King should have fucked mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, which would you rather be King should have fucked mountain or want to keep climbing? Well, that's the thing. Uh, what day is it? Uh, yeah. What day is it? <laughs> True. Yeah. I felt that. Yeah. Right now in this moment. Uh, we've been doing a lot. We're very, very tired. <laughs> so King should fuck Mountain? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I think the thing, because of the nature of how this work is and how like all of a sudden our job is to truly be ourselves, like the, th- and like, like when you, when you decide to be a musician, that's the trade that you make where you're like, okay, I'm going to be myself. Then it becomes like, you asking me that is like, what kind of life do you want? Today, I want to be, chill and have a wonderful time and just eat all of the most delicious food Mm -hmm. and love my friends and um you know like dance on the palm of the divine when i play shows and like i've got that (laughs) that's the thing i mean we're, we're getting we're getting to see what a bigger version of our band would look like and there's parts of that that are so cool and there's parts of that that I have no interest whatsoever in. You know what I mean? Like, and and so it's it's wild. I, I feel like your whole life, especially like growing up in America, it's like like it's this capitalist like eternal growth thing. Mm-hmm. You know that you're where it's like it's like baked into you. But I don't know. I feel like you get to a certain point, and we're extremely fortunate and so lucky and creatively fulfilled at like every new chapter of our like artistic life and I feel like we're in that phase where I'm kind of starting to question like is there anything else I really want besides to keep doing the thing I'm doing now yes I want to sit on the couch well yeah that that's what I'm saying but you know what I mean like (laughs) like I I mean, on like on late night, like I want to sit on the couch on late. Oh, night. that couch. Sorry, that's you what I want to do. Oh. So you have like well, Tonight Show dreams. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've done it a lot. We've a done lot, a lot yeah. of TV. You've like never to... done a late night TV appearance? No, we've done a bunch. Oh, of Oh, we've yeah, done yeah. so yeah. many. Oh, yeah, but I've never sat on the couch. Mm. Oh yeah, uh, we always play. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Mm. It's it's weird. It's like, but I think at a certain point, if you're lucky, you get to kind of figure out what you want your success to look like you mm. know because that's the thing i think you i think it's easy to go along with the river of something and end up somewhere you didn't necessarily want to go without realizing it you know and i feel very fortunate at this point to be like man we're we're at a really cool level we get to make music with our friends we get to like bring up other artists that we love we get to like tour to in it like the coolest fan base <laughs> ever yeah i don't know man yeah we have a record label we have a studio i don't need to We're be chilling. beyonce you know like well i think that's like to your point you do need to reach a certain level of success though or you can then have the the luxury of choosing it's a huge luxury the, the exactly. type of success you want to garner and to get on the couch there's a game that needs to be played where like people need to be invested in you more than just your music and like who you are as a personality and like what's the difference between an Ariana Grande and somebody who is just performing, you know? Exactly. I, and that's the real thing is that like I want the couch, but also like I'm not sure I want to let people in. Well, that's it. You said I want to pick the like, you know, you can't have there is 
you, you have to give up something. I know, and I don't want it's mine. It's so. <laughs> it, but it is like it is a dance, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. Unless you go and invent a character that you then get to portray, and then that's like captivating enough to go and you know. It's nice. Which people do. People do do that. I mean. Pretty much everybody on the couch kind of has mm. that. You know what? That is true. But I can tell you this. The people that I know have sat on that couch who are the most talented and gifted, Those, what you are seeing is so deeply rooted in their genuine reality. Yeah, totally. That it, the, the switch may be turned on a little bit tighter to on, mm -hmm. you know? But, like, it's so rooted in truth. Yeah, right. Th which is what makes it so easy, but also so widely palatable and enjoyable and, like, why people, like really at the end of the day like will invest I in think you people have really good bullshit detectors fuck you know yes I mean? now be, dude our phones everybody is accessible at all moments in time yeah. you can see everything somebody's doing you've seen it like you can read motherfuckers like nobody's business like you're right it's stronger than ever before well and i think that people i think no matter what people say we all want pomp and circumstance but like at the end of the day you People really respond to honesty. Yes. Even if it's something they don't like. No. You know what I mean? Like And you believe it's their truth. Yeah. And and I think that's when you see somebody who's like truly good at that, you know? Like has truly figured out how to like be on the couch as themselves. It's like because they figured out how to har how to like harness that thing, which is not easy. Totally. No. The only person I know who like really does it and who's like absolutely there is Jenny Slate. Like oh, who I know absolutely. personally, yeah. you're like, whoa, it's you. You're just there. It's <laughs> so cool. You're just like famous and a person, <laughs> like at the same time. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. yeah, it's really special. Yeah, she's so special. When you're putting together No Rules, Sandy, are you thinking about the couch? Like, are you thinking, will this music take us to this next level? No, not with this one. Okay. With every other one, yes. Really? Or at least yeah. the last two, maybe. At least yeah. the last two. The first one, not really. But what changes? What changed? I think. Probably the pandemic also just that it didn't feel authentic in the same, like I stand by those two records. I'm so like, I'm so proud of the people that made that made them, the younger versions of us, but also like the content and the ideas in those records are so great. I do think there was like, at least on my part, Nick has always been kind of outside of this in some ways. To a fault. In perhaps. that like I have a weird death wish for fame and attention. Um, but I, but like this with this one, maybe it was the pandemic. Maybe it was just the fact that we were like coming together and doing the thing that like is at the root of what we've always done, which is like trying to impress each other, trying to make each other laugh, trying to bring joy, trying to like be creative and make things that we've never made before. And that just felt so much nicer to do than like trying to also like we're too weird. <laughs> Like, we're not going to do that. Like, the reaching thing is wrong. Like, what we need to do is, like, do our own shit, and then, like, the couch will come to us. Totally. We can't reach for the couch. I think, honestly, the weirder you are, the fucking thing will come yeah, quicker. 100%. Vibe, yeah. And I think, like, for a little bit, I was just, I just got, like, in the weeds. Well, and also, it's, like, we talk about it like it's a bad thing, but, like, it's fun. Like, Shooting for straight up pop music is fun. It's like, oh yeah, it's, it's not... like this logic emotion puzzle you're trying to put. I mean, it's like I love it. Yeah, like, but there's two different things. Like that, I'm down with. It was yeah. the, it was the also the like, but I want like the harboring I... of the wish for more. Yeah, I feel like that was more. That maybe it was more you than me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I want to know how you get to a place where you can write a song in 20 minutes. But also, you were trying to impress each other before, well, with this record, but what were you doing before in the studio? Was it, was it not impress each other? Was it... Oh, it was the same. Uh, no, I... Here's focus the thing, on one we thing? We talk about this. Like, I remember in, like, the last one, we made a concerted effort to, like, jam more together in the studio mm. because we had felt like we were starting to lose that thing and we were starting to, like... Just work differently. Just work a little less. Like, we were thinking a little bit more about macro stuff. The shape of the record. Mm. How something's going to read at a festival. What we want our show to feel like. We were thinking about things that weren't maybe just the song in the moment sometimes. Mm. And I think on top of that, you know, you know the real difference for me? is just I feel like the last two, 
I can still hear an element of coming from a place of fear or scarcity when in the writing. Like that was also an element, like worrying we were going to break it. Do you know what I mean? Meaning or like what? lose it. Like the, the essence of the entire album or the no, song? Like, like, uh, like loser careers. Like, like not maybe like, cause the thing you do this stuff, you have like one thing work out and like for a lot of bands, that's the only thing that ever works out. True. You know what I mean? And so after that, especially with the second record, there was a lot of like, Oh my God, how do we not? I used to describe it like, like putting your finger out and a hummingbird lands on it. And then you're like, <gasps> how do I, how do I not scare the hummingbird away? You know what I mean? Totally. Like, like there's a there's a part of that in it where you know you're coming from a, a little bit of a place of like oh we really got to prove this and we got to do something and this to me was the first one where that felt completely gone now it just felt like i love where we're at i love the people who love this music i love how i feel about our relationship artistically i love how i i love the thing that our band is and I love like trying to make her laugh or like angry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> emotions are emotions. Yeah, and, exactly. and I, that's maybe the biggest difference is just like we were always there was always in the back of our mind. I think trying to shoot for something outside of making a great record before, and this was the intent was purely for each other's delight. You know that's really special by the way the album is no rule sandy there's a link in the description below uh you guys first met at the cactus club yeah oh yeah milwaukee wisconsin <laughs> sandy <laughs> what were you doing there sandy was opening for my mountain band man. mountain man and uh and then we were friends on twitter uh for years yeah and i asked him to do a remix and it took him a freaking year uh, well it took you a year. <laughs> In it took, my defense, it took when me I coming it. back to the Cactus Club and being like, "Where's the remix? I asked it for you. I asked you for it a year ago." And I was like, "It's hard. It's hard, though." Yeah, I was like, "No, it's not." <laughs> it was. He yeah. wanted it to be perfect. Yeah, I did. Well, in my defense. Once I nailed it, I sent it in, and then we started a band that now has defined my entire like adult <laughs> career. So, like, you know, I feel I stand by it. It's true. What'd you hear in that remix? Also, why'd you request one from him? Because he was good. And it's it's rare to find, like, when you're... It's rare to find, like, one, guy, one like, floor boy. Like, one, like, like guy with a... I'm sorry. That's what I call electronic musicians who are too excited about their show, and so they forget to bring a folding table, so they just put all their pedals <laughs> on the floor. We've all seen the floor boy. Yeah. Um, but, like, one, like, one dude that makes, like, sad instrumental hip-hop... <laughs> <laughs> and he was very good at it uh so i remembered him and then when i i had like a concept of wanting to make like a mountain man remix record which no one on my team cottoned on to even though i asked so many people to do remixes um and when nick sent his in it was just good it was like different and it was larger than the sum of its parts cool so, yeah so i was like we should do that more <laughs> and you did and we did <laughs> and and then we became a band I moved to North Carolina for six months to finish the Sylvan record, and now we've lived there for ten years. Yeah, <laughs> is it important to stay in North Carolina and not, you know, get sucked into the L.A. or New York lifestyle? I mean, we come, we're here all the time. We've been here yeah. as much as we've been home this year. Yeah, like when you live on tour, we spent like when it's not a pandemic, we we are like on the road nine months out of the year. A lot, yeah. So it's a pretty great place to rest. The yeah. pace is different. It's not like living in, like, in New York, the pace of New York is like tour. In L.A., like, I don't know what the pace is here, but it is like... It's kind of it's, a build your, choose your own adventure. Yeah, it's a choose your own adventure. <laughs> Everything's a secret. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, it's like, so true. we live here, like, one month out of the year anyway, <laughs> just because it's a great place to come and, like, see all our friends here, be inspired, and then be like, bye. But for us, too, I think that, like... <laughs> You know, I think that's hurt us in some ways uh, because we don't hang out with all the cool people, you know? Like, we don't do the L.A. thing. Yeah, you can't grab the features. Yeah, we don't, you know, we do sometimes, but it's not like, we're not, like, around, you know what I mean? Um, But I think for us, especially, especially now, I can't imagine our artistic life without, like, the community of people that were around in North Carolina. Um, And there's, like, a... 
uh, there's just a total unpretentiousness to the music scene there that feels like anything can happen and I just cannot imagine giving that up I think if we toured less I'd want to be here New York London a little more but we're out so much and we're here so much that it's like getting to go back to our studio out in the woods yeah that's great like, it's just man it's really it nice. is the fucking best like that's peaceful and also, like, you're, you're definitely big shit on King Mountain or whatever it King is. King shit of Fuck Mountain. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you definitely are the biggest people in town and fucking... Where are you oh, North no, Carolina? we got J. Cole. Don't worry. Yeah, we have J. Cole. Uh, oh, yeah. God. You're not beating him. <laughs> so what, are you number two to him? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't count. <laughs> where, where, are you, where are you in North Carolina? We're in Durham. Our studio's huh. in Chapel Hill. We're in Durham. Cool. They're pretty close to each other. Yeah. We know. We are on the radio there for a long time. Oh, you yeah. were? Yeah. We've never been there, though. You should come. Come on down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you should come to our studio. I hear like nice. We can sleep is that five people like adults in it, so. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, you can have a house. Sick. <laughs> Sick. Yeah. Betty's Studio, is that the name? Yeah, yeah. Betty's. Nice. Wait, isn't there a song on the album named May 4th or something? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We did yeah. interludes. Oh, we wanted to do, like, a rec- so many of our records have been about, like, we've really curated the spaces of silence between songs. And for this one, since it was so everything all the time. I wanted to make a record that had no silence on it. So Betty's May Fourth, two thousand twenty-two, is just kind of what was happening. Like, I think it, that's me walking out onto the porch and you hooing into the backyard. Well, there was so many. Frogs. It was the day that yeah. we, yeah, it was the night that we sent the masters in. So we wanted to like have something. Yeah, it was from almost the like night a time we stamp for us. Very you know, cool. well, that's, so much I of like that, that stuff is that like like the all that stuff, all those voicemails and like voice memos and all that stuff is all from this like tiny window where we wrote the record yeah. so it was like we we just wanted the whole thing felt so stitched together and like scotch tapey anyway and like there was this intimacy to that that again talking about like giving people doors you know like it felt inviting it was like, it felt like the more we did that the more it felt like it was letting people in mm. and and mm. So we just kind of leaned into it, mm-hmm. and that one in particular was like right before we finished it. That one in the the, the No Rule Sandy interlude was like the last things we put on it, and they were from the day we sent it in. And we just we just wanted to have that thing where it was like this is when this happened and where, you know, mm-hmm. just as like to further that thing of like putting a pin in the map of like our lives. And like those personal touches help build community. Yeah, that's the whole dream, you know, like both for us personally with like our friends and like all of our family and friends that are on it and that we see every day. But also I think the more, again, the more detail you give somebody, the more it allows them to feel like they understand the yeah. world and they're a part mm-hmm. of it and feel invited, you know, living a life different than touring in a Prius. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I miss the Prius a little bit though. Yeah. We still, I mean, you probably have a huge bus right now. No. Yeah. We have two, two. Oh, yeah. casual. Yeah. Do you each have your own bus? Oh, no, it's one for us cool? and one for our crew. What oh. if, though? <laughs> you yeah. could. One day. Like, you just get so sick oh my of my God. shit. And you're like, oh. that's it. It would be great. <laughs> I would love it. Are, are you guys playing with a full band now or just you two? No, it's just, just, just us. Yeah. Do you guys prefer? Because I've seen you guys with just you two and the full band. Do you prefer one or the other? The full band was for like a like a stunt that we wanted to pull. It sounded great. It was really fun. It felt like more we than had, a stunt so, when we did it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's kind of a stunt though. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we just got to like bring all of our friends on tour, which was so fun. Also, cause you know the music world, it's so insular mm-hmm. and like you like kind of, you're on this like little traveling, like uh, secret hideout or whatever like your bus becomes like your world becomes so small you're like with your crew you're the center of it and when you're a two person band it like can feel pretty isolating mm-hmm. so getting to bring all of our friends in and like create this band with all of our like favorite music makers it all was of us so going through fun. like TSA just like absolute <laughs> chaos yeah we made no money but it was worth it, was it. so great though yeah and we got to play like Walt Disney concert hall that's so it cool was, like, it was so chill yeah but it like it it was crazy. That was just such a. It was cool because it almost like externalized our own band for us, and mm-hmm. it was like we got to see what it meant to like our friends and other people in a different way, mm. you know. And so coming back to, like this this run, it informed so much of it and so much of this record. Where it, like totally like 
cracked the knuckles of the band in a way where it was like, okay, yeah, like let's have Sam play a saxophone solo on this. Let's like, it, like it's just, it felt like anything could happen. And coming back to the duo felt like heightened. Like we rebuilt the show from the ground up and made it way jammier and like more like different night to night. And then yeah. like, like there was something about recentering it with just the two of us, like, especially after all this time of not doing a show, just the two of us yeah. felt like, man, we just felt like, it felt like coming out swinging. It felt so good. Energetically. It's so fun to come back to two. Mm-hmm. Cause then it's just like ping, 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 yeah. ping. Like, and that, that's so fun. Also, it like looks punk still to just be two people huge making a there. huge amount of sound. Like, he has my two little tables, all these wires. Yeah, and like <laughs> slamming <laughs> around. Little, like yard sale on yeah, stage. Yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Where are you doing a show in LA soon? No, uh, no, no, no. We're we, not going to tour this album. We are, but like we're on tour with Odessa, right? Yeah. Now, here's the thing: so. like we we wrote like we told Odessa we would open their tour, and then we wrote a record, and we were like, let's put it out. So we we're out. so like it's got it's like the timing is interesting, and in that like we're just going to be like on tour with Odessa we're until on this crazy sold out arena tour for like the next like until October basically yeah does it feel weird when you guys walk into arenas you're like what the, like what we're, we're playing an arena tonight like arenas are so weird it is very interesting to play arenas <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure how I feel <laughs> and also we haven't <laughs> also we haven't opened a tour since like, like 2015 yeah. 2016 yeah. it's fun because we're in front of people who don't know who we are which like rules we used to be really good at opening that was like our bread and butter yeah you just like go in and like fucking dom the shit out of a crowd and be like listen to my songs <laughs> which is fun uh, but we haven't done it in so long so it's like i almost feel like it's like i'm I, i'm more about to enter like a like a working out getting stuff done montage you know where it's like like punching the bag and like like yeah keep, it's sick you know. yeah and like in our show I mean, the Odessa show is a Insane. true like feat of of like ingenuity and time code and engineering. It's so crazy. It's so beautiful. But like, we're like a weird, we're like little worms compared to like the thing. Like their thing it's is like, like titanium, and we're like little human guys. <laughs> hey, hey, everyone. Yeah, yeah hey, How everyone. About this toe tapper. Hey, so <laughs> yeah, here's a fun one. It's it's cool, but it like. Yeah, it's it's a whole new thing. I lo- it's my favorite part about this life that we lead in that like it's always changing. Yeah, you there's always, always new shit. You keep <laughs> figuring out one thing, and then the minute you have it figured out, you get flipped into this new version of it that you don't know anything about. Yeah. So like, it's been really even over the last three. Like we just did three with them in Seattle, like their their hometown run, and it was at this like massive like the the, the climate place pledge the arena. Used to play like. <laughs> You know, that's the name. I the think cli- it, that is the name, isn't it? The Climate Pledge Arena. Yeah, yeah it it's the most. Uh, it's the, the most. Cleanest. It's the cleanest and most uh, eco-friendly oh. arena. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> but we did three nights, and it was like it was crazy. Like the first night, it was like we got off stage. We're like, okay, all right. And we had just done like a headlining run where it was like every night was like high fives and like champagne, like you know whatever. And then we get to do this, and it was like we did this. Like forty-five minute super tight set and come off and we're like, okay, all right. <laughs> Next night we were like, rearrange the set a little bit. We we're getting like, it, yeah, okay, it. all right. And then the last night we were like, fuck yeah, we're, like, we're awesome. But it, it's well, then it's like, a new like, city and a whole new stage. Right? Yeah, and it's like trying to find, trying to figure out how to communicate the thing that makes our band make sense in all of these new spaces is like endlessly fun to me it's like such a cool challenge exactly i feel like this is like the lesson that i'm learning this year is about somehow we have a band as a band have like elbowed our way into all of these like strange mainstream spaces levar burton presented us at the grammys you know what i mean like Like, and then we gave out awards there this like no sense it doesn't make any sense and it's so (laughs) weird and silly and we're like constantly like that's what we're learning in this moment is like how like why are we here what are we doing what does it feel like how do we do this how do we do the honesty like how do we actually be the thing that makes people like our band yeah but here's the thing like i Hmm. think we need to work on being more mysterious i think we're actually too honest Ah, (laughs) that's why i recently changed my instagram bio to mysterious bitch which i think totally works (laughs) it does 
It's I more. Feel... It's the most mysterious I've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem. If people ask me questions, I like really answer. <laughs> we'll just scrap the entire interview. Yeah, please do. Yeah. I've already asked never... way too much. <laughs> talking about the couch. Jesus Christ. What we're talking about? Put me on there. Maybe we can just bleep out everything you say. Yeah. yeah. But, oh my God. Just fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know, you tell me. Ooh. The, the last question I have is, have you ever, like, the music is a little weird, and which is what it makes the music the music, but have you ever found yourself being like, this is too weird? Like, this is too weird for even us. We shouldn't do this. No. No, I mean, I, I think there's stuff that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't work. If it's not, like, that's the thing. Everything that we've made that we've both been like excited about, we've finished and has come out as a Sylvan song. Do you know okay, what I mean? Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of stuff There's that we like either run out of gas or it's just not very good or it's like weird in a way that isn't fun, you know, or like doesn't, doesn't do it. Or it's weird it, for know? weird's sake, like when you're like, mm. yeah. yeah, and you're like, this just isn't, what's it reaching for? It's yeah. just reaching towards alienation. Or it, you That's can tell fun. that when you started it, you were actually like trying to recreate another thing, which yeah. is never a cool way to start anything, you know, but you mm. maybe didn't notice. So it's not that it's not weird, it's just not good. And it yeah, doesn't come out. It's not good. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense. Weirdness. I feel like we've put out some incredibly weird songs, but I feel, think they work because they still, you can still sing them. Which ones? Backwards. Which ones are weird? I don't think they're that weird. Your reality is really funny. Your reality is the weirdest <laughs> thing we've ever put out. Would you How ever you go know? back and rework something that you scrapped? No, because it's like move on. You know, yeah, I, we yeah. have some folders of like, so also like the danger is cooking it. You know, like when you hear a song that a friend made where you're like, oh man, you were done this for eight months. And it yeah. sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not fun anymore. Yeah. Well, and like, also, I think, like, even when we started working on this one, you're done. like, right out the gate, uh, each time, each of us did this, where, like, we'd start something and be like, hey, what about, remember that beat from the whatever? And the other one would have to be like, no old shit. It would always like, be Like, just me. don't. I did the, I did a, because there's one? a couple of beats that I've been dying to use that I just aren't think, aren't going to be a thing. But Oh, well, you should just give them to somebody else. That's the other thing is, like, sometimes Sandy makes beats and I just don't want to write on them. <laughs> Does that hurt your feelings? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also it's like I don't I don't write dark. lyrics and melodies. So I, I I can't even be like, all right, well I'll do it because like I would suck. Yeah. Like it's, it's yeah, gonna be bad if fine. I Yeah, do like it. sometimes I read shit that Sandy doesn't like. True, yeah. Yeah. And, and that less, hurts my feelings less often. all the time. <laughs> less often. Let's get real. <laughs> yeah, well, like what's the last note you gave on lyrics? Suggestion? Uh, honestly, oh, it's no, usually, I think you're right. <laughs> it's Sorry. usually I mean we do this to each other all the time, but it's just like this is a thing we both do, but like there was a song on the record where she wrote this thing like really fast and it was very honest and personal. Ugh. And I was like, that is amazing. And she was like, well, don't get married to it. I'm rewriting all that. And I was like, okay. And then I rewrote the whole thing. And she sang it and I was like, I'm going to play you the first version of this and then I'll play you the one you just did and you tell me that we shouldn't use the first one. Oh, wow. So you let her give herself the note. No, he was no, totally I was giving him a dick about giving, it. But. Yeah, he's being an <laughs> yeah. asshole. <laughs> But he was right, you know, oh, and like, okay. and that's the thing, that's the thing that's like, it's one of the things that I love about our collaboration is that like, we can always say what we feel. That's the way it needs it's to never, be. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like when we're arguing about a song, we're always arguing about the song. And that's the thing. When we've gotten lost in our process in the past, it's when we stop fighting with each other. Mm. It's when we like accidentally start just accommodating. Mm. And that's when the music starts to suck because we like, cause it loses the friction. It loses the edge tension yeah. breeds art baby 100 well, percent. and also like we both make shitty work sometimes you know what i mean like me way more than you but like, <laughs> no, and, I, like I, 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 I value like she knows my artistic voice better than anybody so when i make something and i'm excited about it i bring her to her and she's like i don't know man like i have to hear that yeah. because like I know that she's a fan of what I do. Like, and I know that what she wants is for me to not half-ass it. And like somewhere in there, I know that I kind of would like cut a corner, you know? Yeah. Like there's mm. <laughs> this beat in like fall of 2020 or something. I was all excited. I was like, babe, this is, this is going to be huge. Come on. And she was, she listened to it and then she was like, I was like, you know, she takes the headphones off and I'm like, What's up? You got something? She's like, I don't know. I mean, it's good, but it doesn't fuck the pandemic, you know? <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's such an accurate burn. That, that was fun because that became like the level of like everything you needed to fuck the pandemic. Like, the new on, bar. Are you, are you, yeah. 
what are we doing here? <laughs> is this, are you like, are we... Are you fucking the pandemic? Are you fucking the, the pandemic? Day? Are you bringing it like it's the end days or not? What are we, what, what are we doing? <laughs> On that note, wow, that's <laughs> Sorry. poorly timed cough. Uh, um, your reality uh, is a little strange, isn't it? Now oh, thinking yeah. about it, yeah, it was, it's yeah. a little weird. Yeah, <laughs> very much so. It is really weird. It is really strange. Yeah, it's that's fun. the one where we it's have different. Starting, yeah. It's starting to, re- like, I love it too because people are getting a little mad about it on the internet which i love because they don't like it yeah or they're like what is this yeah which, which is i perfect. which is great yeah, honestly when i first heard it i that was my thought it was like what what is this what I is know. happening yeah like what's happening here i can tell from your face yeah <laughs> you nailed it <laughs> art creates conversation i'm it's, gonna play that song right here's now the thing, though, like that's my that's like my favorite thing i think that's my favorite song we've made right now yeah it's a good one hmm well, that's your reality. We're going to play it right there. Perfect. But also, <laughs> you should listen to No Rules, Sandy. No Rules, Sandy. No Rules, Sandy. with all the different emphases. No Rules, Sandy? No. No Rules, rules Sandy. Sandy. <laughs> There's a link in the description below if you want to listen to it. Uh, you good? I think we covered a lot. Yeah. Sylvan great. Esso from a video game, right? Oh, so true. Yeah, probably everyone asks you about that shit. It's not really from a video game. Don't do this. Wait, what? It's got to be mysterious. Don't do wait, it. Wait, Come wait, on. wait, wait. Oh, sorry, I can't. Wait, what? <laughs> sorry, never mind. <laughs> have you, like, have you planted a lie? It's only half a lie. <laughs> <laughs> so it's still a lie. <laughs> what the fuck? When we're done here, we'll tell you. I wow. think we can say it now. No, we can't. No, absolutely th- not. No. At this point, what? are you I think we can't. Absolutely not. No? Okay, Under then never mind. No sorry, what about the mystery? Mystery. Can't do oh, shit. This is a perfect <laughs> avenue for mystery, and you're oh my shooting God, in the thank foot. thank you so much. <laughs> never mind. Mysterious bitch forever. <laughs> Sylvanessa, everybody. <laughs>